How's it going everyone? I'm Tavius Place. welcome back to my channel. On today's video I'm going over my wildfire build for warlocks. Since the seasonal artifact has quite a few mods for solar and stasis subclasses, I decided to give this a try and I'm having a lot of fun with it. But now before we jump into it, remember if you like this type of content and you find it informative, don't forget to support the channel with a like and heavy attack on that subscribe button, so this video gets pushed to other destiny players like you. Without further delay, let's jump straight into it. For this build, I am pairing Top Tree Dawnblade or Attunement of Sky with one of my favorite exotic auto rifles since Destiny 1 and a newer piece of exotic armor that released with Beyond Light, but yes, I'm calling it Wildfire because it reminds me of the green fire from Game of Thrones. I'm sure you all got that reference. Anyway, the Attunement of Sky melee ability is Celestial Fire and it's one of the few ranged melee abilities in the entire game. Warlocks also have Penumbral Blast with the Stasis subclass, which is basically the same thing, same animation but Stasis. Top 3 Dawnblade also allows us to fire weapons, use Celestial Fire and throw grenades while gliding up in the air with Winged Sun, which is always nice. We're also able to consume our grenade with Heat Rises and float around for an extremely long amount of time, useful when you're trying to make a huge jump or skip an area altogether. Last we have Acre's Dash, which is a mid-air dodge used for the most part in PvP. I'm using the Solar Grenade as always, no better choice there, and our Healing Rift, which is especially useful in the new Festival of the Lost Captivity when summoning the Headless Ones. If you're the only Warlock in the Fire Team, your teammates will thank you. Now for this build, we're taking full advantage of our ranged melee ability Celestial Fire, and the exotic weapon that will help us get our Celestial Fire back in no time is none other than the Monte Carlo Exotic God Rifle. Introduced back into Destiny 2 with the Shadowkeep expansion, this auto rifle is a random drop and can also be acquired from Zer on rotation. New players, Zer's a homie, so don't forget to pay him a visit every Friday. Now, the Monte Carlo method reduces our melee cooldown just by doing damage and has a chance to fully charge your melee with each kill. This is a pretty cool combo because you can sit back with Monte Carlo and just keep shooting an unstoppable champion, for example, and keep getting your Celestial Fire back. Useful in farming Hero Nightfalls, I found out. Also remember that there's no primary ammo anymore, so Monte Carlo will never run out of ammo. Now the exotic weapon perk is Mark of Chain, which increases the damage of this weapon with a melee kill and kills with this weapon, which Celestial Fire would take care of. So this weapon will keep giving us Celestial Fire, and Celestial Fire will boost the damage of this weapon. Nice loop there. Sadly, as of the recording of this video, there isn't a catalyst in game yet for Monte Carlo. Hopefully with the Witch Queen expansion, we will finally get it. Moving on to the rest of my loadout, at the time of the recording I've been farming the Nightfall Lake of Shadows and running the Festival of the Lost Activity and for both of those you need a sword, so I've equipped Eternity's Edge with Tireless Blade and Surrounded. And for my energy weapon, the Ritual Weapon from Season of the Splicer, the Null Composure Fusion Rifle. The exotic armor piece we're pairing with all of this is the Necrotic Grip. You can do the same exact build with Sun Bracers instead, which will allow you to throw up to 5 solar grenades immediately after getting a kill with Celestia Fire. I have a video about it in my channel if you'd like to check that one out, but you can follow this exact build and swap the Necrotic Grip for Sun Bracers if you want to try the multiple grenade build instead. The Necrotic Grip exotic arms released with Beyond Light are tied to Solo Legend and Master Lost Sectors. Just check daily for the rotation of the Lost Sectors and farm when it's Exotic Arms Day. With some luck and you'll get it within the first 5 runs. The Exotic Armor perk is Grasp of the Devourer. Damaging combatants with your melee and venoms them with poison that deals increasing damage over time. Also, defeating a poison combatant spreads the condition to nearby targets. Although it doesn't say it on the description, you don't have to have your melee full to inflict poison on an enemy. Punching without your melee energy full will still poison them. What's so cool about this combo is that your Celestial Fire causes Solar Splash damage, and with this exotic the enemy is also left with poison. The fire from the splash damage and the green from the poison spreading is what reminded me of the Wildfire, and I love it. Moving on to the stats and armor mods. I tested this with my melee cooldown maxed out at tier 10 with a 32 second cooldown and noticed that it doesn't make much of a difference with Monte Carlo. You still get your Celestial Fire super quick even if you're at tier 6, especially with the Elemental Wells we will be picking up. If you're not going to spec for Strength, then I would spec for probably Resilience or Recovery since those Headless ones hit pretty hard in the Haunted Lost Sector activity. Now for the rest of my mods, on my helmet I've equipped Hands-On for Super Energy and Meta Kills. 
fusion rifle ammo finder and melee well maker to make some solar elemental wells with melee kills. On my arms I have the new stasis affinity that allows me to equip new stasis mods from Season of the Lost. One of the new mods is melee kickstart. When your melee energy is fully expended you gain melee energy. This mod brings your melee cooldown down by 5 to 10 seconds. At tier 7 my melee cooldown is 45 seconds doing nothing and with this mod I was getting my melee back in 39 seconds. So it is a really useful mod, I highly recommend using it. If I'm not mistaken this mod is from the Wayfinder's Compass for Season of the Lost but let me know down in the comments if I'm wrong. I am also using the Thermoclastic Blooming mod from the Seasonal Artifact. Defeating combatants with solar melee creates a normal power. And last, Elemental Light to make solar elemental wells with their super kills. Moving on to the chest piece, I have a fusion rifle reserves and melee damage resistance since we're going to be real close to enemies and another new mod from the Wayfinder's Compass, Seeking Wells. Elemental wells you create will move across the ground toward nearby players. During testing I noticed that this mod is inconsistent. Not sure if it has some type of cooldown for wells to come to you or if it has to do with the distance between you and where the well was created but when it works it's pretty fun and useful having the wells come to you and give you ability energy. For my legs I only have a sword and a fusion rifle scavenger. And on my class item I have two mods from the seasonal artifact. And these are great for champions. Useful in hero nightfalls, not sure if it works on grandmasters, let me know in the comments if you test this in GMs. Thermoplastic strike. Solar and stasis melees disrupt combatants, stunning them, delaying ability regeneration and lowering combatant damage output. Strong against overload champions and also replenishes your melee when you stun a champion with your melee. And the last one is withering heat. Causing damage with solar ability weakens champions for a short duration. This melts overloads, not gonna lie, super good. Okay, so with this build, Monte Carlo will constantly give you back your Celestial Fire and constantly using it will burn and poison enemies. When an enemy dies, the poison spreads to nearby enemies and the kill will spawn a Solar Elemental Well which will move towards you with the Seeking Wells mod. It will also spawn an Orbal Power with the Thermoclastic Blooming mod. For Overload Champions we have the Thermoplastic Strike mod which will stun them and the Withering Heat mod to weaken them for a short duration enough time to swap to our sword and finish the job. Again, if you'd like, you can swap the Necrotic Grip Exotic for the Sunbracers Exotic and instead of spreading poison, you'll be able to spawn non-stop grenades for 5 seconds. They are both super fun builds, so this video is basically two builds in one. And there you have it my friends, two super fun solar builds for all my warlocks out there. If you like this type of content and you find it informative, a like and heavy attack on the subscribe button is greatly appreciated. Also, do me a favor and hit that bell to get notified when my new video goes live. Once again, thank you for your viewership, I'm Tavius Place. I hope you have a great week and if you'd like to watch other informative Destiny 2 videos, you can click here.